the Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. This is the Financial Survival Network. Financial Survival Network is presented to you by Regal Assets. Buy and sell physical gold and silver through your existing retirement plan, 100% tax-free with Regal Assets. If you want to include physical gold or silver in your existing IRA or old 401k, request your free investment kit, which was recently featured in the Forbes and Smart Money Wall Street Journal magazines. Call toll-free 855-678-6620, 855-678-6620, or visit regalassets.com. It's time to catch up with Diana Zappa. Diana, how you doing? Good, Carrie. How are you today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I mean, there's so many crazy things going on, and uh, the top of the list has to be this guy, Jess Ventura. He was the uh, governor of Minnesota. He got in there on a fluke. You know, he says a lot of stuff. I don't know to whether to believe half of it or not. He said he was a Navy SEAL. There was a dispute about that. He was a wrestler. There's no dispute about that for WWF or E or whatever they are. And, you know, now he's a conspiracy nut wacko, although a lot of these conspiracies, I'm sure, took place, but very difficult to approve. What's your thoughts on this character? Well, I, again, think Jesse has, you know, he's been around. He's He's certainly been through a number of careers, politician, he's an actor, he's an author, he's a veteran, So he's, and you're disputing that at this point, even though it's recorded. But, uh, you know, he's the 38th governor of Minnesota, which is, as you said, he got in on a whim. But um, but at the same time, that's because, you know, he's part of the 2 to 4% crowd out there. The 2 to 4% crowd as opposed to the 96 to 98%? Exactly. Exactly. So, uh-huh. you know, saying you got in on a whim, I mean, there's only a, you know, specific small number, but in Minnesota, I know they're pretty libertarian up there. They have their own banks. They, they have a state uh, monetary system there. Uh, um, yeah, they do have state chartered banks and stuff, but, uh, you know, Minnesota is like not really the hotbed of uh, libertarian <laughs> thought. They're mostly a bunch of liberals who think that uh, the lib in libertarian means liberal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it means liberal. Yeah, well, that's what they think up there in Minnesota. Uh huh. Well, I, I was actually just reading this little article that uh, Sean passed over to me here, and it was it's quite cute. It says brilliancy in its simplicity. A back off and let those men who want to marry men marry men. B allow those women who want to marry women marry women. C allow those folks who want to to abort their babies, abort their babies. D, in three generations, there will be no Democrats. I love it when a good plan comes together. Yeah, but, you know, then there's this movie. I don't know if you ever saw it. I think uh, Owen, whatever his name, Wilson was in it, called Idiocracy. Oh, yeah. And, and basically, that. yeah, what happens is that the intelligent people are too busy working and they don't breed, but the dumb people... <laughs> are drinking beer, breeding like rabbits, so that soon what happens is that the uh, recessive (laughs) genes take over and a couple of people in an army experiment get frozen and they're totally of average intellect. And then they, they wake up like 500 years later because they've been forgotten about, but somehow their, their freezer gets overrun. And they wake up to this world that all people do is drink beer and uh, party. And they're geniuses because they're of average intellect. And the intellect of the human race has deteriorated so much that, you know, they're like looked up to. They're like people can't believe that, you know, they could be so wise. And, you know, they're like totally average. And I think that's where we're heading now (laughs) is this idiocracy that – you know, that it seems like the system is aimed at, uh, you know, reverse Darwinism. Right. Well, that's, that, I think that could be part of the problem, that's for sure. But, you know, we're getting off on sort of a crazy conversation here. Why don't we bring it in a little bit? Let's go back to Jesse Ventura a little yeah. bit. 
And uh, I think that he has some interesting points, though. I mean, he does bring one of the things that I'd like to see with people like Jesse is their presentation and their appearance and how they decide that they're going to, you know, produce different, uh, uh, you know, trains of thoughts and such. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I mean, I have a few other friends, of course, out there in different, um, I won't say radical, but in areas that are looked upon as not mainstream. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they always come across as being so different because, first of all, they look different. And then when they're speaking, they're not honing their skills in as well as possibly could be. So I think there's some presentation features with him that I'd like to see first of all change, right? Right. And 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 when you look serious, people take you more serious. Mhm. Yeah, well, you know, he was dealing with uh, the FEMA camps and they actually visited a couple of them. <clears throat> you know, FEMA camps supposedly where they're going to when the right. world order breaks down, they're just going to lock people up there and you know, they're supposedly ready to go. They just need to go ahead and you know, then they start locking people up. Whether this is true or not, I think there are these detention camps, and I've heard it on pretty good authority that they do exist. Um, but they're, the purpose of them is, is somewhat cloudy, shall we say. But mm-hmm. They definitely exist, there's no question. And they've been used before to house uh, illegal immigrants coming into the U.S., in Florida, there's a couple that are used, and you know he stopped off at one, and it had a big playground there. And he said, "What's this for? Who are you people?" And they totally stonewalled him. He couldn't get an answer. So he does, you know, he does attempt to illuminate issues that the rest of the media uh, refuses to acknowledge even exist. But sometimes he's so coming out of left field is so off the wall that it's really difficult to uh, to comprehend what he what he's saying. Mm-hmm. Well, I, you know, he's an extremist in a lot of ways, right? And so, but but um, but but these are what it's good, this is what it's going to take for people to uh, look at you know different ideas. You know, when people you know I always think back about the conversation when you were talking when you were doing things in your own town hall saying things people didn't like and they were coming out to see you and you know this it, it creates a stir and it creates a buzz right and it gets people oh, yeah. thinking okay you know what 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 is this guy saying like why is he so radical why is he you know <laughs> making these points and i think that this is where it stems from from people like him who get out mm-hmm. there and and say things that is completely non mainstream oh yeah well you know there's something to be said for uh upsetting the apple cart for stirring the pot and, uh, you know, really just trying to get people to wake up. Uh, I'm all in favor of it, God knows. And irreverence, for the sake of irreverence, there's something to be said for that. But he's gone so far over the edge a number of times that I think he's lost credibility, rightfully or not. And you have to kind of try to stay in the, uh, I don't want to say mainstream, because that's no. that's not it, but but try to remain relevant and credible. And when he was governor, you know, he was just so off the wall on so many things that I think he lost a lot of credibility. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, whether he's presidential material, well, compared to what we have running this time, you know, maybe uh, maybe he'd be an improvement. Yeah. Well, again, I think that uh, because he's taking that independent stance and that's where he is coming from and that's what he wants to run on, the independent platform. So having said that, I mean, most independents, and he actually was in this interview that I saw him on just recently. He was on Pierce Morgan the other day, but I saw another interview. He was discussing, uh, you know, there hasn't been an independent since Ross Perot. And he he... He basically is just making points that I think he just wants to get out there and stir things up and start to awaken different people for different reasons. And uh, and I think that uh, there's merit in that. And you know what? That's the basis of liberty. Go out there, do whatever you want, 
and say what you want, and why not? Hey, more power to them. And speaking, exactly. Speaking of liberty, we have a mutual acquaintance, this group of young people known as the uh, Students for Liberty. It's kind of a uh, libertarian-based student group, and they're pretty interesting, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. And just further to our point, I mean, you know, you and I want to talk about issues that, you know, wouldn't normally be talked about, right? And uh, and And I think that, you know, he is that person as well. You know, and, and, you know, people like Ross Perot, look at Ron Paul, I mean, all the people that are out there being of the free market mind. So, yes, the Students of Liberty, uh, I think that uh, now here's a group that just came out of, they've been around since 2007, and they started in Georgetown with five or six students, and apparently it has expanded right now. They have something uh, in the number of, almost close to 800 chapters around the U.S., and actually it's around the globe, and they are located in universities. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? (laughs) Hey, let me just tell you, I interviewed them last year when I was at Freedom Fest in Las Vegas, interviewed uh, somebody from there this year, one or two of them, and talked about the student debt, you know, which is something that Students for Liberty, you know, if you want to be free – you don't want to have two hundred fifty thousand dollars of debt that you owe to your government that your government is never going to forget that you can't get rid of in bankruptcy. You are stuck. You are a debt slave for life. So, you know, the interesting thing is I've thrown a number of different um, categories, different subjects at them, dealing with what's wrong with America, and to a man and, and woman, they were all conversant and able to intelligently discuss issues ranging from the deficit to out of control military spending to to student debt to credit card debt to the collapse on Wall Street. These kids and I, I guess I I get to that point where a twenty one year old is a kid to me, these kids are really wired on what's going on in the world, more so than their occupy counterparts for sure. Mm-hmm. I, I see that, and and they're all about um, you know taking your own life back, right? And uh, getting away from government intervention, telling you what to do, uh, you know how to live your life financially. Uh, their whole mission, which I think is uh, you know basically just saying you know we're, we want to be able to live the way that we want and 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 have our own discussions and uh, leave us alone. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Actually, I'm just pulling up their mission. It says that they're providing a unified student-driven form of support for students and organizations dedicated to liberty. So, uh, What's their uh, site, Diana? Uh, it's studentsforliberty.org. Right, and, and highly uh, recommend it there. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it looks really, really, uh, promising. And, and, you know, when we're at Freedom Fest, which, you know, you and I go to annually, uh, they've had a booth there and I haven't had uh, a chance to really get to talk to them, but I mean, they're, they're obviously getting some real traction out there, which is fantastic to see. Yeah. And they're like, uh, they're into honest money. Another yeah. thing, another conversation that I had with them that, you know, they're amazingly, knowledgeable because honestly my kids have opinions but they aren't really that well versed in the fact in fact I'm about to tell my, my uh, younger daughter to not discuss anything uh, with politics or economics until she actually studies it because I'm really not interested in how she feels because that's what happens with people especially in the progressive bent they think with their feelings and that's okay because you need to be you're engaged in relationships, it's all about feelings, but there are there is a thing called objective fact. There is something called the economic theory and economic law, and you can't violate those laws like we've done for the better part of the century and expect to have a happy outcome. Mm-hmm. So, Exactly. So, well, there, you know, the point being, of course, you know, what does liberty mean, right? So, I mean, economic freedom and how to choose, uh, social freedom and how to live, and ec- ec- intellectual and academic freedom. 
Mm-hmm. So that's kind of, you know, they're little, I'm just sort of reading a little more here about what they've got going on. But uh, anyway, I think it's fantastic. It's really great. Yeah, yeah and it's something really, really cool. uh, on the campus that's totally lacking in so many places is intellectual freedom and freedom of speech. You know, the, you know if you don't toe the liberal line at most schools, forget about it. Uh, you are verboten, you're an outcast, and, you know, you are effectively a, say, a, a really a disadvantaged uh, minority if you uh, believe in economic freedom and, uh, and the ability to pursue your own happiness without the nanny state here telling you what to do. By the way, Diane, I don't know if you followed it or not, but in uh, the People's Republic of uh, New York City, they banned the Big Gulp soda. Any soda above 16 ounces, uh, sugary soft drink, um, I think it's above 25 calories. Um, you can't serve it in bigger than a 16 ounce cup in movies, restaurants, and uh, and street stands. So so much for freedom to uh, to become obese. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we had talked it. about uh, that a few weeks back, right? Remember, yep, we had the yep. conversation about cane sugar and <laughs> your uh-huh, body not sure. recognizing fructose. Uh-huh. But, um, but I know it's again, it's 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 just the number of laws that get implemented. I mean, I was reading; I think it's every year there's something like forty four hundred oh. laws that are implemented into the Canadian or the American way of life. And, 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 you know, it could even be more than that, but it was yeah. some crazy number. And, uh, oh, maybe, oh, I think it's actually 44,000 now that I think about it. And, uh, yeah, and absurd. I think it's absurd. And, you know, who, when you think about who the heck is writing all this, I mean, and look at that alone. You could just take that department out. Do you think we have enough laws as it is? Let's just take that whole department out. I wonder how many jobs would be the taken down of new from laws. That. You know, it used, used to be they were they were gobbling up forests. Now they're just gobbling up disk space. So while they're less harmful to the environment, they're much more harmful to the economy than they've ever been. And, you know, we should just have a law that gets rid of every law and starts over again because nobody knows what the hell is going on here. And that's taking it from a lawyer who used to actually uh, have to read these things. Not that I wanted to. No, I know it's true, but I mean, you know, the uh, it, I mean, let's just be honest here. It says, it, well, I think it was Ron Paul who actually uh, identified some of this, but I mean, forty it was forty thousand new laws were put on the books mm-hmm. for the first day in twenty twelve. Yeah, that's correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, forty thousand. And so every year, if you can expect that, the soda pop law is just going to be one. I mean, what what will be next? Okay. I mean, you know, you're going to be well, told, how, told how to tie your shoes pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, well, you've got to, if you don't cross that lace properly, forget it. You're in the big <laughs> trouble. You're in the Army now. Yeah. And actually, that's the point. <laughs> you're in the Army. Yeah, well, it's uh, totalitarianism, and it's, uh, it's they know better than you. So at least there's some kids out there who are trying to do something about it, roll back the clock, and... You know, you should need to justify laws. That whole, like, health care law, I want to get into the merits of it, but just the fact that it's 2,000 pages long and it's not like it's readable because mm-hmm. every every uh, clause in it, every paragraph refers to another law that isn't part of that law, and you have to try to figure out what it's talking about. Nobody knows, you know, and then uh, if you break these laws, you could go to jail. Not necessarily the health care law, but so many others that you really can't figure out your conduct, how you're expected to act. And that's also what's extremely, uh, extremely demoralizing about these laws is that uh, people are going to jail for violating them and they're not even aware that they're violating them law. Right. Well, exactly. And that, that's actually, I think for next week, I'm going to print out a document that shows a bunch of these new laws. We can have a discussion about some oh, of the laws to. that maybe people are not aware of out there. That would be great. Well, yes, okay, we'll do that. As you know, I'm off to Chicago for Hard Assets Chicago. 
Uh, so we've got to cut it a little bit short this week. Okay. Diana. But, uh, hey, I highly recommend people go stock up on food. Go to preparewise.com. Put in the discount code LUTS. You get a good offer from them. And go to my site, order Regal Gold. Start ordering it because right now it's, it's hit kind of a intermediate high of around 1770. But I really don't think that's going to last for much longer. Do you? Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's going to continue to go up, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. was down today. They had knocked it down ten, twelve dollars. Now gold's down a dollar thirty. Silver is up. And, oh, by the way, I guess we should give the date so people know it's September twentieth around yes. noontime. Silver's up six cents the ounce. Gold's down a dollar thirty. A total reversal, and it mm-hmm. just shows that that the uh, the algorithm boys can't uh, keep a good a good metal down. Can't keep a good metal down, exactly. <laughs> so. Anyway, Diana, we will talk to you next week. You be well. Okay, you too, Kerry. Have fun at the conference. Oh, uh, thanks. And one other thing, um, most of the way through, whatever happened to Penny Candy. Oh, I'm yes. I'm totally enjoying it. I want to get the other books, the Uncle Eric books. Oh, yeah. Uh, did you order the series or just the, uh, Not yet. Just the one book? Yeah. Not yet, but I'm going to. So. Yeah. It's, it's oh, great for people who don't understand anything about economics. I it's totally agree. Godsend. All right. You be well. Okay. You too. Bye, Kerry. Bye. Carrie. Bye.